Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be going over some terminology that you're going to hear consistently when working with version control systems. And the first term I want to go over is the checkout term. And basically, a checkout is the initial pulling of a specific revision or the latest revision of a repository to store on a local machine. Our next term is working copy. And the working copy is the copy of files on the user's local machine that have been pulled from the repository. So whenever you're making changes to files that are stored in a version control system, you're working on the working copy, hence its name, working copy. The next, the next uh, term we want to go over is repository. And the repository is where the current and the previous versions of a set of files are stored. So this is the repository is really where all of your data is being stored, all of your files. And whenever you do a checkout from a repository, if you're checking out the latest revision, it's always going to give you a current, the current version of the file. But the previous versions are still stored. And the only thing you need to know in order to pull the older versions or the previous versions of a file is the revision number. And the revision is basically the, the state of a repository at any given point in time. So anytime when you go ahead and you make a change and you submit those changes to the repository, a new revision is going to be created automatically for you with systems like Subversion, where Subversion starts with one and just auto-increments that number by one each time a, you submit some changes to the repository. So this is the way in which version control allows you to create backups and be able to access older versions of file easier. Another term you hear quite commonly is called head, and that's basically the latest revision of the repository. Our next term is change, and a change is a modification to a file under version control, pretty much what you would probably expect. And then you have commit. Commit is the act of submitting changes you have made on your working copy to be merged with the repository. So you go ahead and do a checkout, and you go ahead and you make your changes. When you're done with those changes and you want to submit those changes back to the repository and be included in the repository, that's when you would commit your changes and then anytime someone else did a checkout they would be getting your changes along with whatever was previously there in the repository as long as they select the latest revision. And this is, this is the spot where you, when you commit your changes that new revision number is automatically going to be created for you. And the next term is merge, and merging is applying two sets of changes to the same file or files at the same time. So let's say you go ahead and you check out a repository, you make some changes to some files, and then you go ahead and you update from the repository again just to make sure you have the latest version of the files. But let's say at the time that you were working on some changes, someone else was also working on some changes and committed those changes to the same files that you were working on. This is when you go ahead and you do an update with your changes already in place. This is when the version control system is going to try to take those two sets of changes and apply them to that same file. And a lot of the times, as long as you're not working on the same exact spot of the file, the version control system is going to be able to merge those changes fine. However, if there is a point when two people are working on the same spot of a particular file at the same time, that's when a conflict is going to happen. And a conflict is a conflict occurs when a change to a file in version control cannot be merged automatically. When a conflict occurs, a user must mainly resolve the conflict by diffing the two files and selecting the changes to be committed. So let's say you're working on some piece of software and you're working on a particular method of a particular class. You go ahead, you update the file, and then you do whatever work you need to do on it. But let's say at the same exact time, someone else is trying to maybe fix the same thing you're trying to fix because you two haven't communicated on what you're working on. So he goes ahead and updates his, his working copy to get the latest version, and he makes his changes and then commits them. When you're finished making your changes and you try to commit, if you try to commit before you do an update, you're going to get a conflict. And what is going to happen is the version control system is usually going to create two different, a few different versions of the file. And it's going to create the two different versions that have conflicted with each other. And you're going to have to basically take those two files and manually diff them to see which changes you want to actually commit and which changes you want to discard. Now there are tools that make different files easier and we'll take a look at those when we get into it. 
Now, once you go ahead and you diff the two files and you you um, select the changes that you want to commit to the repository, that's basically the act of resolving a conflict. And that's basically when a user diffs a file in which a conflict has, has happened and manually selects the changes to be committed. Then the next term I want to take a look at is branch or branching. And branching is the creation of a copy of set of files under version control at a specific point in time. Once branched, the original set of files, which are the files which you branched, and the branched set of files, which are the the result of that branching operation from the original set of files, both of those are managed independently from each other. Now this is a pretty common occurrence in software development, so let's say you have a you have your main line of development code. But you want to go ahead and try to experiment with this e experimental feature in the application, but you're not really sure if it's going to work, if it's going to be possible to even implement, and you don't really want to hold up anybody working on adding features that are known that we, that are known to need to be added or fixing some bugs. What you would want to do is you want to take the main line of development, you want to branch that into a, a new folder for you to be working on in isolation. And that way you can continue to work on your branch copy of the main development working with your experimental feature. And once you're done, if the experimental feature didn't work, you can just delete the branch and continue with the main line of development. But if your feature does work and you want to incorporate that into the main development, all you would have to do is go ahead and merge your branch with the current mainline development so that when you merge it all of the changes that have been made since you did the initial branch will be incorporated along with the feature that you implemented as well. Then the next term I want to go over is label slash tag. Um, commonly you, you'll refer this will be referred to as a tag but sometimes it's referred to as a label. And it's basically a snapshot of the repository at a particular point in time. This is very similar, and in a lot of version control systems, it's essentially the same exact thing as a branch. However, tags are designed to not be modified. So you go ahead with your, your application main development, and you release version 1. At that point, you would probably want to create a tag of version 1, and then just leave it alone. So that any time you need to get back to the version 1 um, code base, you have that tag that hasn't been modified since the actual release of version 1. And then if you get to like version 1.5, you may want to make a tag of that and just just making tags of kind of milestones in the in the files that you're working with. Now trunk is a line of development kept separate from branches and tags. And a lot of times, especially in software development, this is usually where the latest version of the files are stored. So along with our building an application example, the trunk is where the latest version of the files are going to be stored. And a lot of times that's going to have untested code or or it could have code that isn't known to work or it may not be the final version, stuff like that. It's it's useful if you want to give people using your applications access to the latest and greatest features of your application, but if but a lot of times you're going to also want to have those tags so that people can have access to stable versions of your applications as well. Now an export is kind of like a branch or a tag in that an export is the creation of a copy of a set of files under version control at a specific point in time. However, unlike a branch or a tag, an export does not copy the version control metadata, so the export of files are not managed through version control anymore. Of course, the original files that you exported from are still managed through the version control. And this is kind of useful as it gives you a clean a clean copy of your files. It doesn't have any of the extra folders and files that the version control system needs in order to manage all the different changes. And this is useful if we go ahead with our application example again. Let's say you have your users have access to your version control system and they can go ahead and check out the code. But if you want to give users the ability to just download the code from your website or something in a simple manner and not have to have them go through a version control system, you would probably want to export your code and then you could zip that file up and put that on the website. And that gives you the smallest package that you that you really want for someone downloading it from the website. It doesn't include all the extra space that's needed for all the, the version control metadata. Now last but not least, 
the update is the retrieval of changes that have been made to the repository since the user last updated their working copy. So you go ahead and you check out, make some changes. If you you want to make sure that when you commit that you have the latest version of all the files, you're going to want to do an update again. And that's just going to go ahead and and your working copy knows what revision it last updated on. So what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and go into the re go into the repository and take a look at any changes that might have happened since the last time you updated your working copy. And this goes over all the basic terminology that deals with version control systems. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at the server client model of version control a little bit more in depth. Thanks.